Christina, I remember being in Hawaii, and whenever we go on uh, business trips, we, we do business, but we always want to have a little fun, right? And Kurt and I was like, okay, take us to the beach. We're in Hawaii, we want to go to the beach, and we go with Darian, Miyuki, and their kids, and we're at the beach, and they wanted to do something. Well, Kurt, crazy tale, wanted to do something that I had never done before. Anybody ever try something you've never done before? Maybe five links is something you've never done before. And he wanted to go, everybody was going to these high cliffs, and they were all the way up here, and they, they were jumping into the water. And I was like, wow, you know, we're in Hawaii. We're somewhere place different. People are doing something different. Like, let's try it. And so we're going up. And I said, but here's the thing. You got to stay right here, Kurt, because I need, I need video for Facebook and for Instagram. I need you to take pictures. So I'm going to go by myself. You take pictures and just like video it. Like, I'm going to get up to the top. I'm giving him instructions. And so I get up there, and as I'm climbing up, I hear all this chatter and all this talk. And then I get to the top, and everyone is talking about this lady. And this lady is at the top, and she won't jump. But the thing was, it was so hard to get to the top because the rocks, the way they were, it wasn't like it was a ladder. There were rocks that you had to climb up. And the only thing I could think of is that I have to go up, but I don't know if I could really go back. And I get up there, and everyone's talking about this lady. I chose to say, you know what, I'm going to go to this cliff right here. The lady is there. Everybody's talking about her. And I got caught up into it because I felt sorry for her. And the reason I felt sorry is because she was so scared to jump. And we could look over to the side and see our family, and I see her husband, and I see him yelling and screaming at her and saying, jump! Jump, just do it already. And I'm listening to everyone else around her and everyone else around her is saying, she's been up here for hours. She just won't jump. And I said, well, why don't she just go back? They said she's too scared to go back and she's too afraid, afraid to jump. So here I am thinking I'm a motivational speaker. I can inspire people. I've inspired thousands of people. I can do this. Mm, let me talk to her. Hey, and I'm talking to her, and I'm saying, listen, what are you afraid of? She said, I'm just scared that it's going to like go wrong, and I, I have kids, and I just, I said, well, don't, why, don't you go, why don't you go back if you don't want to? If you're that afraid to move forward, why don't you just go back? And she said, but I don't want to. Like, my kids are watching, and I want them to see me jump. I said, well, then jump. <laughs> but I'm so afraid. I said, so I'll tell you, this is what we're going to do. Here's my... Great idea. Hold my hand. Hold my hand. And some of the times in this business, we have business partners that won't go by themselves. And you feel like I got to hold their hand to help them to complete the race. And I'm telling this lady, I'm like, just, just hold my hand. We're going to jump together. You know, I'm just as afraid as you are. Like, I'm scared out of my mind. I don't want to do this but I don't want to not do it either, so let's just jump together. And I talked to her about five minutes, and I had convinced her to jump with me. And she said, okay, I'll do it with you. I'll do it. And I said, okay, let's go. And as we walk, we get closer to the edge. I said, what we're going to do is when we get here, we're going to count to three, and we're going to jump together. Are you ready? She said, yeah, I'm ready. I said, are you sure? She said, yeah, I'm sure. And I was holding her hand tight. And I said, OK, come on, let's jump. On the count of three, we're going to do it. Your husband is looking. Your kids are looking. I said, she's going to jump. And everybody was like clapping. I said, one, two, three. And I jumped with my eyes closed. And as I jumped, I felt her hand let my hand go and she stayed on the cliff while I jumped. But let me tell you what I didn't realize until I got off and talked to my husband. He said, are you crazy? I was like, what? I was trying to help this lady. I can't believe she ain't freaking jumped with me. I didn't went through all that talking and stuff. He said, 
do you realize if she would have held on just a little tighter, that you would have fell back and hit the rocks and you could have killed yourself? I didn't think about that. So what I want you to understand is some of these people, they gotta go. They can't stay. They're not going where we're going. They don't want to go there. And no matter what you say and no matter what you do, you can't make them. So stop trying. And trust me, doing it is going to kill you. It's going to kill your business. So just jump. Don't worry about who you leave behind. Don't worry about these people. We got to keep moving because the goal and the vision that we have for ourselves is way too important to think about those who are not willing to take those steps with us. So what was number two? Number one was what? What was number two? Everyone can't go. And here's number three. You have to appreciate what you've been given. What do you have to do? For a long time that I've been here, what I notice is sometimes I don't know if I always appreciate it like I should. And um, and I want to I want to tell another story because I want you to um, have an understanding of where we are and what we have because I, I truly believe that this is it. We don't have to look to the left. We don't have to look to the right. We don't have to wonder what everyone else is doing. We got everything we need right here. And sometimes I think we got to learn to appreciate what we have. And sometimes we lose that appreciation. I was watching the movie uh, Selma with Martin Luther King. Did you guys see that? And I remember there was a part in the movie where Martin Luther King and his people came into Selma, and there were two young guys that were already hitting up a movement there. And they were a little upset when Martin Luther King came in and started to, you know, stir things up. And like always, there was this one person that, you know, it was two guys. One of them was like, okay, I'm just going to do whatever he wants us to do. The other guy's like, no, no, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair for him to come in. And it was a part in the movie, and there's always things that we watch and we see that, you know, it just resonates with you. And there was a part that he said, and, and, and the reason I want to say this, because when I say I want us to appreciate what we have, is that sometimes you got other things going on. But what we have is the same thing. We have a movement. This is what the vehicle we have that we've been given and that we chose to be a part of. And I remember this part in the movie where the, the two guys are talking and the one guy is trying to convince the other guy of why we need to follow the movement. Follow the man that put it together. And he said to him, he said, you know, like, what is your deal? What's your problem? Why we can't just fight with them? Why can't we just go out there and march with them? He said, your problem is you don't like that the people chose him. And it made me think back to where we are. And sometimes I feel like whether it's you don't like your leader and you don't like that they're the leader that's in charge, whether you feel like you don't like the decisions that the company made but they're the company that's in charge. Whatever it is, I want you to understand that this is the movement. And even though you might not agree with everything, this is what has been chosen for us to take to the next level. And if we come together and follow that movement, that's when we all go to another place. And then I was uh, I know we have Eric Thomas that'll be speaking this weekend, and I was doing the running challenge. Anybody do the running challenge? And I'm running on the treadmill. And the motivation, I'm listening to Eric Thomas 
uh, he has like an album that you can download. And I'm on the treadmill and I'm listening to him. And if you ever listen to him, it gets you, you know, like, thank God it's Monday. You know, he has that loud voice and I'm listening to it. And then he gets to this story that he tells that I had to listen to over 40 times, over and over and over and over again, because it meant so much. And he tells a story that someone else tells, that, that Les Brown told. And, and I want to share this story with you because I think it's such a profound story. And this has everything to do with we have to appreciate what we've been given. And it's about this builder. And this builder is supposed to be this refined builder. Everybody has used him, celebrities. He's built cathedrals, but he wants to retire. And he has this apprentice. And the apprentice has been doing a good job. And what he says to him is that, I need you to take care of something for me. I need you to build me a home because I'm retiring. And I don't want you to spare any expense. Build the biggest home you want to build. Use the best products that you want to use. But I want a retirement home. And so he trusts the apprentice. He said, here's the only thing. We're going to do it a little different than what we normally do because I'm not going to see you through the project. I'm going to let you build it. And I got to go out of the country so you won't be able to call me. So the apprentice says, OK, he takes the responsibility. And he goes and he starts to build the home. And as he's building the home, he's not giving it his all. He's not using the best products because no one is watching him. So he's doing what he feels like doing. He's taking his time. He's doing it how, you know what, let me just put something together. And when he's all said and done, the builder comes back. And he looks at the house. And as he's walking through it and he's viewing it and looking at the columns and looking at the craftsmanship, and he's done this for years, so he knows that he hasn't given it his all. Just like your leader who's there, and they're watching you, and you're telling them that you're doing every single thing that you can do, but we're looking at your results, and we know that you got more in you than what you're doing. But he said, you know what? He looked at it. This wasn't his best work. He knows that he could have done 10 times better. And he looks at his apprentice, and he gives him the keys. And he says, this is your house. You've been building your own home. And of course, at that moment, what do you think he felt like? I wish I would have done it differently. I wish I would have put more time into it. I wish I would have put more thought into it. This is your house. And you're not putting enough time into it. You're not putting your all into it. We have one of the best companies ever. And what I can tell you is that when it's all said, when and done, and you look back, I want you to think about, did you treat this like it was your own, truly your own? Did you do every single thing that you know that you can do? Because the house that you build is the house that you will live in. You haven't been given it enough, and that's why you're not getting what you want to get out of it. But we have something so special in our hands. And we have to learn how to appreciate it because what we've been given is a blessing. And if we don't take advantage of it, then somebody else will. This, in my opinion, is such a, a crucial moment for us in this company. A crucial moment for us to come together. A crucial moment for us to realize what we need to do to go to the next level. And the only thing that I can tell you is that if we don't treat our house right, then our house won't be what we want. So what I would love for us all to do is to stand up, join hands, hold your neighbor's hand, and I want you to say that this is our house. This is our house. Say this is our house.
And I want you to remember that you have to protect it like it's your own. You have to work in it every day like it's your own. You have to build with it. You have to talk to your leaders. You have to always have a positive mindset because if you don't think positive about your business, then who will? This is our house. We have to protect it. This is what? This is our house. Say it again. What is it? I'm your double platinum senior vice president, Tashina Anderson.